I'm here with Jareth Mansfield and we're talking about the healthcare app. You are the co-founder of the healthcare app. Can you just tell us a bit about the idea, how you came about it? So how I came up with the idea for the healthcare app was basically I helped many children in Uganda through the Rose Knight Foundation and you know they they have many difficulties over there their education isn't free the health care isn't free and of course food and water isn't free so these guys are often hard pressed to try and help their children and keep food on the table so when someone gets sick it really f- throws a spanner in the works and it was essentially from that that I just thought what if there was a way to get these guys some sort of free health care or some sort of way where they do not need you know maybe they could we could substitute or pay for the hospital or some sort of way that they don't need to stress whenever somebody gets sick whenever a child is sick they're just able to get the right advice get the right treatment and it's not necessarily just going to be something that someone making commission is telling them to have. It's actually what is best for them. So could we just rewind a little bit? Obviously, uh, you have your own foundation called the Rose Knight Foundation. How long have you had that? Um, so it's been almost four years. Um, but officially, we started keeping logs in the... I think the first log we have of don- donations was the 23rd of October 2020. So we've been going three years, basically, officially as the Rose Knight Foundation, but I've been helping the children for four and a half, may- maybe, years. Four and a half, five years. And in that time, the majority of your donations, what have the people in Uganda, the children in Uganda, used the money for? So majority of it, to be honest with you, is just for food to keep the children alive. But we have helped to send children to school. As I said, the education isn't free, so they pay around 20 to 40 American dollars a term or somewhere along those lines. Some, yeah, sometimes things pop up, you know. Not long ago, we had a child fall into one of the cooking pots and get second degree burns. And they had to have like a skin graft and all of these things, which, uh, you know, is, is, isn't is cheap. Some things we can't avoid. If we are able to go directly to a doctor knowing what the issue is and what the best way of treating it should and could be, then it's likely to help save children's or adults lives and injuries help them and help doctors and healthcare providers to diagnose and push people through the healthcare system much faster taking the strain off of off of the majority of healthcare providers yeah so please can you talk about those sort of instances that not necessarily an injury but just someone getting ill obviously i don't know of people's immune systems quite low in Uganda because of the lack of food or lack of variety in the diet. Therefore, this healthcare app is going to give them more. So the idea is, yeah, you're you are right. The the people, especially the children, they're living mostly off of maize flour, which is corn made into flour. They then add water or milk with it, and then they'll have some kidney beans with it. So their diet is is below the standard it needs to be, so they don't get the full nutrition that they need. So they, they do often get quite sick from that. But the idea with the healthcare app is instead of them just being told by a doctor that they're sick and they need to have pills or a prescription of some kind, if possible, and they just need a lifestyle change or there's a certain herb or fruit that grows near them, our app will be able to tell them where to go to look for it, how to forage and pick and prepare it. And the idea is that that's going to help not only boost their immune system, but it's also going to help them when they're sick. It's going to provide a remedy and it's going to keep them from perhaps having to go to the doctor. So will it give them a bit of an education themselves as well about looking after themselves? So. Yep, that's a great point. So the app is, is going to, it, it works in many ways, but essentially it's like a very high powered Google that can tell you anything about your health, diet or nutrition and fitness as well so say for example somebody had some um symptoms that could be i've forgotten what the scurvy symptoms are but like that's when you're lacking vitamin c Mm -hmm. and then the the healthcare app the the doctor on that the ai doctor would identify that that was the problem and then wherever there are there could just be shown some 
herb or a fruit that was very high Oranges in vitamin and stuff C. Like that. Yeah. That they could then say if you have one of these a day, you'll combat this scurvy. That's that's essentially what's going to happen. But what we may do, depending on what the patient's issue is, is take a diet plan from them for the last two weeks or a month so we can actually see what it is they're eating and if that is potentially causing or, or exacerbating the issues with uh, their health. Yeah, obviously there's a bit of a, a struggle over there financially. They want to send children to school, but there's obviously a lot of poverty there. How can the healthcare app combat poverty? So that's a, another good question. The healthcare app plans to... Co- combat poverty through the use of advertisements so the app itself is going to be free and accessible for anybody with a smartphone and internet uh, or even anybody who knows somebody with a smartphone or internet but how we're going to make our money back is by partnering with advert providers they are going to then pay us a certain amount of money we're going to split 40 percent to the customer 10 percent is going to help us to run the app then 30% 30% is going to go on to building healthcare infrastructure throughout Uganda and Africa and, and similar places. And then 20% will go to the Rose Knight Foundation just to continue feeding, clothing, helping with sanitation and, and whatever else we can do. So just by users downloading the healthcare app and receiving adverts to their phone every time they get a notification they're not obligated to read it but every time they get a notification they know they've helped to build a hospital they've helped to feed and clothe a child and they've also got a little bit of money in their own pocket so it could combat poverty in africa but it could also help individuals perhaps in the western world who are struggling who may you know it's not going to be Hundreds and thousands, but it might be enough to to help somebody out when they're stuck. And this will be like an online currency that they have. It will. It will be. Yeah, it will be a cryptocurrency that we've or that we're building, and that is basically our philanthropic token. And the way we've worked that out is essentially that it, it's able to provide towards the healthcare fund it's able to provide towards helping children and sanitation and it's also able to go towards educational funds so that might be online courses or or creation of courses for people to do or that might be you know sending them on trips to certain places to learn about their health or uh, you know there's a, a variety of different ways that that may come into play oh sounds very interesting I think we'll um, close the, the interview for, for now and have a little break. But um, just before we go, could you let us know about a recent trip that um, the the good mummy's kindergarten school went on? Yeah, they went to Freedom City. It's basically a theme park in Uganda for, you know, young younger children. They've got swimming pools, they've got big blow-up slides and small little rides, like amusement rides and stuff like that and good mummy kindergarten managed to take over 200 children with them and yeah they you know they had a great time there's there's videos of the world on youtube i think at freedom city where they're all in the pool splashing each other and running up and down the slide so he tries to do that every year and we want to make it a thing for all of the groups of the foundation that we're able to you know basically support all of the children to go and have a day out even if it's different staggered days so everybody gets gets a a chance you know but yeah thank you very much